Welcome to a stroke information session on the topic of fatigue and sleep management after a stroke. The goals of this information session are to learn about signs of fatigue, causes of fatigue, tools to better manage fatigue, sleep disorder after a stroke, and tips for a better sleep. It is very normal to feel fatigued after a stroke. And in fact, fatigue affects 30 to 70% of people who have suffered a stroke. Post-stroke fatigue is different than regular fatigue, as it does not always improve with rest and is not always related to one's level of activity. Fatigue is a major problem for many stroke survivors and can have a negative impact on their full participation and rehabilitation, their autonomy in performing activities of daily living, their ability to return to work and participate in social outings, and their ability to enjoy daily activities. What is happening in the first few weeks and months after a stroke? The brain and body are healing, which requires a lot of energy. It is therefore normal for fatigue to become more intense during this period. So what causes post-stroke fatigue exactly? There are many factors that may lead to fatigue after a stroke. Fatigue can be due to changes in sleep, side effects of certain medications for pain relief, depression, hypertension, or epilepsy. In addition, fatigue can be related to associated health conditions such as anemia, diabetes, hypofunction of the thyroid gland, cardiac conditions, pulmonary conditions, or depression. Post-stroke fatigue can also be related to changes in nutrition, such as changes in your diet during your hospitalization or a decrease in appetite. It is important to note that you have as much energy as you did before your stroke. You are now using it differently. Your daily activities require, in fact, more effort and more attention. Your personal care, talking, walking, making decisions, reading the newspaper, or manage managing your daily schedule may all require more effort and more attention. Emotional changes can also contribute to post-stroke fatigue. Feelings of frustration, anxiety, anger, sadness, and depression all can contribute to an increase in fatigue. As well, a lack of exercise is common after a stroke due to a major change in routine during and after a hospital stay. In addition, a loss in certain physical capabilities often limits a person's ability to participate in exercise as they did previously. This decrease in physical activity can also contribute to post-stroke fatigue. Let's review. Are the following statements true or false? If I'm tired, I should take rest periods. True, resting in between different activities is a very important way to successfully manage your fatigue. I'm always tired, so there's no point in planning my activities ahead of time. False, in fact, planning activities ahead of time is very important to successfully manage your fatigue. I should stop exercising, it just tires me out even more. False. Exercise, when properly prescribed to each person's abilities, is a very effective way to improve overall health, well-being, and energy levels. If I sit rather than stand when I work, I can save up to 25% of my energy. True. This is an effective way to conserve energy, all the while still participating in an activity that is meaningful to you. Let's now talk about how to manage your fatigue. It's important to consult with your doctor to see if your fatigue could be explained in part by your medication or by another medical condition. A dietitian can help recommend a diet that increases your energy levels. It's important to take the time to recognize your fatigue and to understand that this issue is very common after a stroke. It's often difficult for family and friends to properly understand what post-stroke fatigue is. Therefore, 
it's important to explain to your family and friends what it is and what you feel. They might be an important source of support. Give yourself time to recover and feel tired after your stroke. Fatigue can take a few months or even more before it improves. Respect your limits. Listen to your body. If you feel tired, rest. Other strategies are remembering not to overdo it. Even if you feel well on one day, you might pay for it the next day. Change your expectations. You now require more time and energy to complete your activities. Don't try to do as much or as quickly as you did prior to your stroke. Keep a journal of your daily routine. This will help track your progress over time. And finally, organize your day. Find your balance. This may take some time to figure out. Plan rest periods every day within your activities, even if it's only for a few minutes. Schedule demanding activities after rest periods. Plan your activities a day ahead. Anticipate the level of energy required for each task, as this will help you set more realistic expectations of what you can accomplish in a day. Make priorities so that you are prepared to reschedule things that are less important if you don't have the energy to do them. And most importantly, respect your schedule. Here are some examples of schedules. It is important to remember to include your rest periods in them and to not forget that you may need more time for certain activities more than you did before your stroke. Be sure to set a realistic schedule doing less on a day with an activity that may require more energy to perform. Tools can be used to help rate your level of perceived exertion. With the guidance of your occupational therapist or physiotherapist, you may want to ensure that your level of perceived exertion is never too high during an activity. This will help set limits when trying to manage your fatigue as well as set a realistic daily or weekly schedule. This is an example of a more simplified version to rate your perceived exertion during or after an activity. Stroke survivors with communication difficulties may have an easier time using this more simplified version. Let's discuss other strategies that can be used to help manage your fatigue. Organize your environment to avoid walking extra steps in your home unnecessarily. Use the stairs less in your home by having everything you need on one floor during the day. Place commonly used objects within hand reach. Designate activity zones in your home where you will spend the most time. Avoid staying in the same position for too long. If standing, you can use a footstool to rest a foot for a few minutes and then alternate. If sitting, it's a good idea to stand and stretch once in a while. Changing positions often is important to help manage your fatigue. If you have the choice, sit rather than stand. It requires 25% less energy for certain activities. Consider sitting for routine tasks such as cutting vegetables, folding laundry, ironing clothes, showering, brushing your hair, brushing your teeth, putting on makeup, or drying your hair. You can speak to your occupational therapist to discuss possible adaptations that can help facilitate your daily activities. Long-handled reachers, electric can openers, serving carts, high chairs or stools for the kitchen are all types of adaptations that can not only increase your safety, but also help conserve your energy in order to help better manage your fatigue. Changing the way you do chores can also be an effective way to help manage your fatigue. Consider shopping online, air drying your dishes in a dry rack, using a dishwasher, meal planning for the week, or purchasing pre-cut vegetables. Delegating tasks to others can also be an effective way to help manage your fatigue. Contrary to what many may think, Physical activity is also an effective strategy to help manage post-stroke fatigue. It's important to participate in an activity that you enjoy every day, 
Exercise every day with your doctor's approval and your rehabilitation team's guidance. And build your endurance by gradually increasing the length and intensity of your exercises. And finally, another very important strategy to managing your fatigue is learning to relax. You can explore different ways to help you achieve this by discussing further with your rehabilitation team. And remember to celebrate your successes and try to keep a positive attitude on new tasks that you can achieve. In the second half of the presentation, we will now discuss the presence of sleep disorders post-stroke and tips to help you get a better night of sleep. Why discuss the importance of sleep after a stroke? Having a good night of sleep is important for recovering. Your sleep patterns or quality of sleep may have changed since your stroke, or perhaps you've always had trouble with sleep. A poor night's sleep once in a while is normal. But should a sleeping problem interfere often with your activities or cause you to stress, it might be a sleep disorder. What are the effects of lack of sleep over a period of several weeks or more? Chronic fatigue decreases energy levels as well as motivation, concentration, and memory. It also makes you feel like you're moving in slow motion. It furthermore affects your well-being, increasing your feelings of frustration, irritability, distress, depression, and an overall loss of pleasure in things you once enjoyed doing. Let's now discuss some commonly found sleep disorders that exist among some stroke survivors. Sleep apnea is when you have pauses in your breathing of 10 seconds or more while you sleep. Some of the symptoms of sleep apnea include loud snoring, gasping at night, profuse sweating at night, waking up with a dry mouth or a headache, poor recuperative sleep, and feeling very drowsy during the day. If you have any of these symptoms, it's important to talk to your doctor about it. Another common sleep disorder after a stroke is insomnia. Insomnia is when you have difficulty falling asleep or staying asleep throughout the night. For most people, certain situations bring bouts of short-term insomnia, such as sickness, a stressful life event, or a hospitalization. Insomnia becomes chronic when it lasts six months or more. Usually, a person's reaction to their short-term insomnia is what leads to their chronic insomnia. Is the following statement true or false? Medication is the only solution to insomnia. False. Medication is effective for short-term insomnia, but is not efficient with time. Changing your habits and thoughts relating to sleep with cognitive behavior therapy tends to help and sustain sleep. So how do you become a good sleeper? Let's discuss some strategies. The setup of your sleep environment will have a big impact on the quality of your sleep. Noise levels can be controlled with earplugs, a fan, or a white noise machine. A cooler temperature is best and can be managed with a fan, an air conditioner, or an open window. And a dark bedroom is ideal with appropriate window drapes or blinds, or even a sleep mask. Is the following statement true or false? Eating and drinking throughout the day and evening can affect my sleep. True. The following is recommended to promote a good night of sleep. Limit the intake of liquids four to six hours before bedtime. Limit coffee intake to a maximum of three regular coffees, with the last one being four to eight hours before bedtime. Avoid all alcohol in the evening. And limit eating to a light snack before bedtime, avoiding all hearty meals. Coffee, specialty coffees, black and green tea, soft drinks, energy drinks, chocolate, and caffeine tablets are all sources of caffeine that can affect your quality of sleep. It's important to consider all different beverages and foods when trying to manage your caffeine intake. Is the following statement true or false? When I have a poor night's sleep, 
I should try to sleep more the next day to catch up. False. It's important to follow a routine and get out of bed the same day every day. Avoid long naps longer than one hour during the day. It's very common to require a nap after a stroke, so if you nap, limit yourself to one hour or less and before 3 p.m. Scheduling 30 minutes of a relaxation routine before going to bed is an effective strategy to improve your quality of sleep. Some examples of this include dimming the lights, reading, watching TV that is non-violent or unsuspenseful, listening to relaxing music, taking a bath, or practicing relaxation techniques found from a phone app or video. And what should be avoided before bedtime includes intense household chores, an intense sporting activity, reading a very stimulating book or movie, going over your finances, or an argument with your loved one. It is strongly encouraged to use your bed for sleeping only. Eating, watching TV, chatting or arguing, worrying, and planning future events and activities are strongly discouraged to do in the bedroom. The goal is for your brain to associate your bed to sleep and rest and not wakefulness.